everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I want to talk to you about something that is a passion of mine and is basically emulation, preservation. One of the good things about PC and one of the things that every PC enthusiast is always, you know, promoting is the versatility that PC gives you against many other electronic systems, let's say consoles. And it's the fact that on PC, one way or another, we can still play all our original games even from the 1970s, right? And even older. Because, you know, PC allows uh, for a big open source or open community to give their best to whatever passion project they have without, you know, having to invest on licenses or anything. So we can access a big library of software and games on PC that they will otherwise be lost forever because those systems are not being made anymore. And I think a big reason why many of these mini consoles existed is thanks to the community, right? Things like Raspberry Pis and everything, the companies saw that, you know, there were money there and they invested on something that basically the community was making. And in this case, I really love the fact that emulation is a big part of this. Uh, leaving aside the legality of it and, you know, all the discussion that there is on this uh, area or gray area or, you know, licenses and everything, if we leave that aside, I think that Emulation is a magical thing and we have a lot of way to enjoy our old games. I can still play the original Monkey Island just to give you an example. Uh, even if I wanted to with the e e EGA graphics or CGA graphics if you want to and you can play your text gra your text adventures, you can play the you can play almost any game, even those, you know, that were made like for a 3D FX cards, there are like software emulation and stuff that you can do to play those games. So, you know, you never have to really um, lost any of those games when it comes to PC. But of course, uh, emulation is a very complex thing and things are always evolving. So today I just want to test emulation using the Intel Arc 750. And let me be clear here, we're not going to be testing things like Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Amiga, DOS, all games, because I will say that 90% of every system that is only 2D will probably work without any issues. As for the performance of, you know, 3D games on PC, I will say that we already have an idea of how things behave when it comes to native games, when it comes to Intel Arc. We know Intel Arc is not very good when it comes to DirectX 9 or OpenGL or older sort of titles. So in this video, what I'm going to be is testing everything from like a console system from PlayStation 1 up to the Switch, going through the PlayStation 3, um, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and so on. So uh, let's see my results and then we are coming with the conclusions. Starting with the PlayStation 1, I was not expecting to have any issues performance wise, more to check if everything looked and ran as it was supposed to. And, yes, and using Dock Station here, the game runs perfectly fine. And even, I even use uh, PCCX uh, Rearm and other emulators using RetroArch, and everything was working really no problems whatsoever, as you can see here in the case of the um, Dock Station and Tekken 3. The game runs without any issues. Then I try a little bit of Gran Turismo, and also no problems whatsoever. And as you can see, this uh, emulator is using Vulkan, which is always a good thing because uh, Intel works better with a newer uh, API. So when trying this emulator, you are obviously not going to have any issues performance wise or in the case of image quality which was what more what i was trying to test at least not anything that i could uh see i tested more games but i think these two here are enough when moving to dreamcast i try redream and also flycast on the retro arch um redream uh ran a little bit better but however i ran into certain weird issue with these games uh, uh, you can see at least as far as i remember the game looks good but um, further ahead on the game, when the truck is chasing you, I saw some issues with the uh, shadows where they were flickering and having this weird transformation. It was really weird and bad. So that's one error I found, but I'm not sure if it's the emulator or is Intel. I don't remember playing these games 
with um with nvidia on this on crazy taxi i could not also see any issues however of course i don't remember this game as well but to me it looks very good and it ran perfectly fine as you can see the frame time is just awesome by the way i am testing all these games at 4k so you you can check there that um the uh, the performance considering i'm running this at 4k is absolutely perfect so no problems whatsoever until we give you playstation and drink us without much issue when moving on to playstation 2 i try god of war 2 as you can see here and also other than may maybe some stuttering that ca could be shader related the game ran perfectly fine with no issues whatsoever of course uh, this emulator is not perfect so there could be issues that are related to the emulation and not to the drivers but i couldn't see anything this game is also running at 4k uh, and every game is going to be tested at 4k unless i state otherwise so as you can see the game run fine and the case of R ratchet and clan i think this is the going commando one or that's the from playstation 3 well i don't remember which version i tested but i think it ran okay i don't have any um recollection or memory to realize if there is any issue but from my point of view the game ran absolutely flawless you can see the frame time is not spiking and it's a perfect 60 fps all the way so this is a, one of those games that you can say it runs very very good on the intel arc the same we can say about burnout uh revenge i think it's the, it's the latest one the ones that came uh, burnout 3 revenge uh, a game that i loved when it came out and i play so much of it and i enjoy playing from time to time and i you can see here i'm not driving very well um but it's because i have some delay when uh playing anyway in this case uh, you can see the game also running at 4k um, with the frame time almost perfect i think any issues are minor and not very important and it's probably how the game ran originally when moving to gamecube uh this is using actually the uh, dolphin version inside retroarch this particular version and i saw some little errors and when moving a scenes it takes a while and there is a shader compilation stuttering but i think this is more related to the uh uh, retroarch dolphin version but it, even so you can see that the game is running uh, graphically seems to be okay with no issues uh, whatsoever now when testing with the actual dolphin this game for example could not run well inside retroarch but when testing with do uh, the actual dolphin this f0 which is one of the hardest game to emulate runs absolutely perfect no issues whatsoever so honestly this uh the intel arc in this case is running quite good and once again even though i have stated this this all both games are running at 4k so you can see some stops here and there but uh, once again i always think this is more shader related Moving on, now we go to Wii U, and here we can see Breath of the Wild. I am using so sort of weird shader to change the color, so the colors are not related to the GPU. Uh, and you can see it runs beautiful. I put a lot of mods, the 60 FPS mod, and um, some to improve graphics, reflections, shadows, and so on. And you can see that the game is running at 60 FPS, no problems whatsoever, uh, only using around 70 to 75% of the GPU. And the games, honestly, I could not for see any problems and i also tested the donkey kong tropical freeze and you can see here how it's a clean image a perfect 60 fps and it looks absolutely stunning i think the cmu emulator is really a good piece of technology and in this case you can see that intel arc is working quite good with, while using vulcan so honestly i think you're going to have a great time with the emulators i just uh, mentioned before so this is a, a you know well we will think i thought it was going to be you know a good start and a clean break however when we get to playstation 3 and i think this is the ratchet and clan going commando is when things started to fall apart even though the first game gave me a lot of hope as you can see here it looks quite good and it's running quite well and the games possess some graphical glitches which are not that important because i don't even know if they're present using other gpus but yes um there there are some glitches here so initially i thought well this could be uh you know a gpu related problem however the game ran most of the games didn't run at all and those that ran ran uh, 
poorly. This one here is Motor Storm, which I know it runs uh, Pacific Storm, which I know it runs good on any normal GPU. But here I was trying to use OpenGL. I tried Vulkan OpenGL and always having issues. It will stop compiling shaders. And when it finally sort of ran, then you could see a lot of graphical problems that they were not present while using NVIDIA cards. So this was my fear. So you will have to test game by game to see if the one you want plays. While playing Xbox original games, this is another problem. As you can see, this emulator which is the Senia, uh, not the se Semio emulator or oh. Yes, Simio emulator, the game, no matter what, I thought it was because I was playing a 4K, but it not, doesn't matter what resolution I'm playing, the game behaves exactly the same, going to 49 to 50. I don't know if this is because the original game behaved like that, but I remember testing it with the Nvidia and running quite good. So I think this is a problem related to the fact that it's using OpenGL. However, when we test another game, in this case, Blinks 2, the game ran at 60 FPS with no graphical issues or uh, slowdowns or problems. So I'm not quite Quite sure what's going on with the original Xbox here, but I can say for certain that the uh, Crimson Skies is a game to run no problems with uh, NVIDIA, however, are uh, having issues on Intel Arc. So this is one of those emulators that you will have to test case by case, the same as PlayStation 3, but you know, you're not going to be very lucky in both cases. When we want to test Xbox 360 with the senior version, this is using, I use both versions, the uh, normal the, um, version and the Canary one, the, uh, Performance is all over the place. It's bad. Quality, uh, image wise, it's not very good. You can see that on some changes of a scene, it takes like a long time before it changes. And this was not the case while playing with NVIDIA. And you can see there is a lot of shadow issues and this looks so much better while playing with NVIDIA. So obviously there is some problem here uh, with uh, Intel, even though we are using Directory D12, which is supposed to be uh, one of the best API for Intel. But in this case, well, it didn't run well. And while trying switch i had no luck with yuzu i normally use yuzu and prefer it but i had no luck no matter what i was using i had the open gl of vulcan so i tried reugens and in this case you can see that the game uh runs quite poor unfortunately i had to um play like this because uh, the MSI Afterburner information what, for some reason didn't want to show. So you can see the frame at the bottom, which is very small, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I, trust me, the 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 performance was not good. It went to 30 to 60 to 40 and moved back and forth in a very elastic and weird way. And you can see the shadow problems. So unfortunately, this game is not running great on Intel and Reugings, which I'm not sure if that's an issue with the emulator or not. Because then when we test like Xenoblade Chronicles Remaster, uh, the game run perfect. No problems whatsoever. The game looks beautiful, 4K. Uh, and the game was running just okay. Well, there is these little flashes here, but nothing that ruins the experience. And I think um, they happen uh, just uh, during certain cutscenes. Then when you're playing the game normally, you don't see that. So the game was running quite good. It was running at 4K and everything seems to move okay. Um, and, you know, it's a beautiful game to look at. However, this is a game that was born on Nintendo Wii. So I'm not sure if that because then it requires less power because it's, you know, not a full blown Switch game which I don't think is the case. However, I'm not sure, but I can tell you that um, at least in my case, Juzu didn't work. Super Mario was always creating problems. And in this game, Super Mario Odyssey, for example, was giving me blue screens with Ryujing. So once again, unfortunately, Intel Arc is not very good for modern systems when it comes to emulation. Well, as you can see, um, many of the games I was testing, many of the system, obviously the Intel Arc has a lot of powers to move them without any issues in terms of power. But as we know, one of the biggest problems with Intel is their driver and their driver support because they are basically a new competitor competitor which can cause a lot of issues so we can see that things like playstation the first playstation gamecube playstation 2 runs really 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 well but it it is when it comes to like newer systems that things start to fall down and it's not because of a lack of power but i think it's because of the intricacies of these systems what i mean with this is that some of these systems are emulated using opengl and we know that whatever is not a uh, vulcan or directory d uh, 12 is doesn't behave very well on Intel. But I also think that many of the complex systems, like it could be the original Xbox, the Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3, and even Nintendo Switch, are systems that 
um, the, the emulation is, is very, you know, um, GPU dependent, driver dependent. Many of these systems didn't even run well when they first launched with AMD cards because most people use Nvidia, so they knew the nuance of how to make the system works on those GPUs. But when it came to AMD, well, it was a little bit different. This has changed a lot because AMD has better support, especially when it comes to Vulkan, for example. So this has made that, you know, many of the translations are much more easier for the uh, developers of these uh, emulators to implement. However, when it comes to Intel, we saw that it was running very good until it wasn't. And what it means is that when we get to L original Xbox, for example, the OpenGL is the biggest problem here. It's not power. It's the, and I'm not saying that OpenGL is a problem in itself. It's a problem for Intel. Uh, what this means is that no matter the resolution, as we saw, and as I, I explained, it didn't behave very well. Um, the, the, the game didn't run at a good speed, and resolution was even part of it, or usage, it was just the way the emulator is done. And until Intel doesn't become more popular, then I guess there is no incentive for the creators of these emulators to implement Intel or understand what's going on. Maybe it's a driver issue, but I think it's, a, it's, it's two sides of the story. There is driver issues for sure, but there is also the fact that these emulators need to be tested and implemented and improved on other sort of hardware. And, you know, these people work out, most of them work for nothing. Uh, that, that some of them have patterns or other things, but m most of them do it because they want to. So if they don't have the hardware, they can test it. So until Intel doesn't become more popular, or people start sending those cards to the developers, they won't be able to um, create or support better the technology. We saw on PlayStation 3 that it, it, it was basic, basically some games were playable, but most of them were not. I, I was able to play like one or two sort of okay, and it didn't matter what I was using Vulkan or OpenGL. On Switch, it was really bad. And like on Yuzu, I don't know if it was my configuration or what, but I really couldn't uh, get it to work and either with OpenGL or Vulkan. However, when we moved to Ryujin, some games will not even run or cause crashes while others run almost perfectly so yeah it's a lottery there however if you're thinking on emulating anything from like say we you back i will say intel is doing very very good in that area so but anything like playstation 3 original xbox or xbox 360 which are i guess it, or nintendo switch where are the uh, major uh, emulators at the moment like the latest one then intel is probably not the card you will want however as i said if you're looking to build like a an uh, emulation machine a um, basic one to move like everything to d and up to, as I said, anything to Wii U. Well, I think Intel is a very good option. We saw the performance. We were able to move every single game at 4K, even Breath of the Wild at 4K 60 FPS without too many issues or graphical glitches, at least not any that I could see. So, well, considering the cost of the card, depending where you are from, it may be a good investment. It's also going to be able to play games as we have shown before. But I just wanted to show you how Intel will behave and if it was a good choice for uh, emulation, if that is your uh, principal interest. So, as you can see, uh, probably depending on what you want to play, it's not. But, as I said, maybe depending on what you want to play, it could be. But this is uh, my results. I don't know what you think about. Do you like emulation? Do you think Intel um, developers uh, should improve their support? Or is this a, a, you know, a, 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 a cat that is uh, trying to catch his own tail? Because if it, the card doesn't become popular, they don't care about it. And if they don't care about it, it's also part of why the card doesn't become popular. So I think it is going to be a problem. And I really want Intel to thrive because we need a third competitor in the GPU space. So thank you very much and see you on the next video.